Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters and I have a build video for you guys today. Today I am going to be building up the Andy's Hobby Headquarters 16 scale M8 Greyhound. And actually this is the first video I've done of this, but this is actually the uh, the third full um, actual vehicle that I've built up with this. The first one was a prototype, the second one was actually a final production that I needed to approve, but now because I have the time, I can actually build one up and show you all of the parts and how they go together. Plus also I was waiting on decals and a lot of the extra special stuff that goes inside the interior of this kit, because this kit does have an interior inside, quite a bit of it you can see. So I was waiting for all those decals. In fact, what I'll do right now is I'll show you a little bit of the instructions that are in this kit and show you some of the little placards because there are placards everywhere on the inside. They basically labeled everything inside the vehicle and it looks really cool because the hatches are so big on this. When you open them up, you really can see a lot inside the vehicle. So I've had a lot of fun doing it and the decals are great, bright and colorful as much as you can be expected for American World War II armor, but the big bright uh, Normandy lettering on the side and lumbers look really cool. And I'm excited to share this with you. So let's get started. Okay guys, let's talk about uh, building this beautiful kit. Now what you're looking at right here are a bunch of the parts that make up the first couple of steps as we build this here. And I actually have one of the, uh, the, the early ones that I built up. This is a real kit all built up. I've actually built a couple now uh, in anticipation of getting this done. This was the one that I, I finalized the molds on. And after finalizing the molds, I figured, well, we might as well paint it and practice and see how that goes together. Now, I'm going to recommend that, obviously, you follow the instructions when you put it together, but you're going to want to put it together in a little bit of different steps just for the painting purposes. And the reason so is I'm going to show you this from the, the top-down view. If you see straight down, you see very, very little white uh, because the floor of the vehicle is painted in olive drab. But if you look in from the sides when the hatches are open, there is a lot of white, and that is because the walls are painted white. So this is what I'm going to recommend for you guys to do. So here's our, our floor. I am going to suggest to you that you go ahead and glue all of the parts that are going to get painted the same color. So I've assembled this little uh, st uh, stick shift right here. That is going to get glued into place here. We also have like the canister that holds the fire extinguisher. And then there's a few other little uh, small pieces like this here. This is part of the bottom. This is going to get glued in here. And then flipping this over, there are some of the supports like this piece and this piece right here, they get glued in there and they support the bottom of the vehicle, some of the structure on it. So once all of these pieces right here get painted, or excuse me, glued together, we're gonna go ahead and paint them. I'm gonna paint all of this olive drab, both top and bottom, as well as all these little accessories, like these little boxes that I built up. You can see all those. And then all these little, little, uh, little pieces that go on the side. All of these are gonna get painted olive drab. And then we're going to go ahead and paint the, the side walls of the vehicle in white. And once we get all of that built and painted, it's much easier to paint and then glue it all together. And you get nice crisp lines and you don't have to worry about trying to mask inside the vehicle, anything like that. So let me go ahead and get all this glued together and paint it olive drab and these painted white. And we'll come back and show you how they fit together. Okay, now that the uh, the pieces are all painted up, we can start gluing them together. So we have this white box right here that'll fit in this little groove. 
this is actually 37 millimeter gun parts in real life and we can also since we have the seats painted up in black we can go ahead and attach all of the front and back of all those pieces glue those into place just like that and of course there's one on the the other side as well and the only other thing I need to do is install the fire extinguisher inside there, which I'm going to paint up separately in a little bit. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move and start looking at the, uh, the outer walls here. We'll zoom in a little bit here. Of course, I've painted those white, and we will start attaching some of these boxes that get attached to the wall just like that. But one thing I did is I noticed that there are these little little boxes right here that get glued into place. I looked at real pictures and I noticed there's a lot of wires coming out of them. And if you're gonna leave the hatches open, I thought it was a good idea to drill them out and install some wires. You only need to install a tiny bit of wire because looking through the top hatch, you'll only be able to see a little bit. So I made just enough that'll go just <laughs> basically off camera, we'll call it right there. Just enough that where you can see inside, you look like there's wires in there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring back my other one and looking inside, you can see the wires that are hooked up inside there. And it's just something that gives a little, little extra visual pizzazz to the inside of the vehicle, having those wires in there. I'm gonna show you a picture right now of one vehicle that actually has, this is a real vehicle, of course, that has all the wires and give you an idea of what you can do to add that little bit of niceness, we'll call it, for the inside of your vehicle. So I am gonna go ahead and get all of that glued on right now, and then I will show you how it all goes together. One other quick thing as I'm adding in all of these little pieces with the wiring, there are a couple of injection pin marks in this portion of the build that before I painted the white, I went and completely sanded them out, that if you are gonna open up your hatches, you will be able to see those injection pin marks pretty easily. So while it's all separate, it's very easy to sand those three of them out. Or actually, I think four. I think there's two little tiny ones next to here that are really hard to see, but I took them out anyway. And then there's one about here and one about here, but they come out very easily. And if you're gonna open up the hatches, would definitely recommend taking them out. And the ones down here all get hidden up, so it's not really worth spending the extra time unless you really want to. Okay, now that all of those parts have all of their little accessories in place, you can see all the little pins and notches that we can just line all of that up and just glue it together, starting with one side. Kind of all just clicks into place once it finds its right place. And then you see what I'm talking about? You get a nice clean line and not having to mask anything. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and get both walls uh, glued into place and we'll start working on the suspension. Okay, here is a top-down view with the sides all glued into place. Kind of rotate down around. Uh, this wiring up in here is already included inside the kit, which you can see a little bit inside, but you can see the extra wiring. Uh, I will add a little bit more wiring on some of these back here. Like I said, it's just a nice visual effect when you look down through the open hatches. Okay guys, what you're looking at right now is the instructions for the next part of the build. And that is of course the uh, the drivetrain, the uh, suspension, things like that. And I'm showing you those right now because it's kind of difficult to show you how each one of those parts go together on this part of the build without um, getting my hands in the way in the camera. Because you want to make sure you put very little glue in certain areas so that when you get it finally done, like you see right here as I'm starting to put this together, uh, that all of these pieces move. Especially if you want your steering to work. You want to make sure all of these pieces can rotate. And if you put too much glue in the wrong area, it is going to uh, completely fuse everything together. And that goes true for all these suspension pieces too. You want to make sure they line up in just the right position, making sure that, like you see this little tab right here, that it is going in the proper direction as well as the other one there. And that's why you want to pay close attention to the instructions. So what I'm going to do is let me go ahead and I've just kind of just dry fitted these pieces. I'm going to go ahead and put all of these together right now and I'll come back and show you what it looks like once it's all assembled. And here is that front suspension piece and you see right here when you glue everything just properly, you will get your steering to work just like this. Now what I can do is I can go ahead and attach it to the bottom of the chassis that we have here. But first there are a bunch of other little parts that I need to put on, which I'll do right now. 
Okay, now we have the, the front end all built up. I'm going in the back here and I'm gluing on some of the brackets as you see this piece right here. Uh, we'll glue that into place. But before I do that, I wanna show you the front end again. And I've gone ahead since and I've attached these, uh, these braces both on the front and back. Now, I'm gonna recommend you go ahead and put those on while the piece is here rather than gluing on here. It's just very difficult to snap the leaf springs in here if it's already mounted to the chassis. Just makes it a little bit easier on yourself. So what you'll do here is once you have those, we'll go ahead and glue the backs in first, get them all seated, and then we'll go ahead and glue the front two portions on. And this way it'll all line up properly and it's just a lot, lot easier to get into the right position. Okay, now that this uh, front portion is completely dried, we can go ahead and start installing some of the drivetrain. And I've got one of the drive shafts right here. We're going to go ahead and put this small one into place. And this is the order I'm going to recommend you put this stuff in, and it'll make it a lot easier to install. So the next portion, these are some sub-assemblies that I've, I've glued together, like this piece right here and the drive shaft and then this back piece and it is very wise to put it all together in this position and then you'll be able to mount the back portion first and then you'll be able to flex it just a little bit line up that piece and then all of this will fit snap into place here and you can just line it up like that it'll snap in if you try <laughs> and i've tried it this way if you glue this portion in and this portion in you will virtually never get this drive shaft in just the way it is because it has to be kind of fitted all together like that uh, and that goes true with this little drive shaft as well that is and i've built a, quite a few of these now this is the easiest way to get in you see how easy it just snaps into place by doing it in that order so once again just leave this portion you see how tight this is too just leave this portion of the build and you don't even have to glue the drive shaft here it's going to stay in there once it's locked in but that'll be the easiest way to get all of those pieces right into place okay here we are here we have the rear suspension and i'm going to show you how it goes together this is one of the assemblies right here all built up one side all the pieces intact and what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to show you the instructions now you're looking at the instructions on how those pieces went together and you can see all the little points on there. One thing I'm going to recommend, be very, very careful and follow the instructions very carefully. There are some little things that can be put on, but they can be put on backwards. So you want to make sure that the part is going in the right direction or you will not be able to uh, have your suspension work right. Now back to the real part. For example, what I'm talking about here is this little pin sticking off the front and back. It's very easy to put these on backwards and have those pins point inward and if they do there's nowhere where the shock absorber can can actually connect to it so like i said just be very careful and build the sub assemblies and really watch how you put them together it's not super difficult you just have to really pay attention as you're going so i've got the other side here and i'll show you what we're going to do here it makes it very easy the way like the holes are lined up so you can see it's got a half circle square on the bottom which means it's going to correlate to the half circle square on the bottom so you can put these parts together and it's pretty pretty easy after that then it's a matter of gluing all of these arms into place which i'll come back later and actually put glue on all of them and simple enough you can get it just like this these will go inside here and if you like i said if you follow the instructions carefully you will have no problem putting those suspension pieces together Okay, now I have all of those uh, sub-assemblies put together, and I will show you how this all fits together now. Uh, remember, all of the pieces are slotted in such a way that it is uh, next to impossible to put those in the wrong position, but still keep an eye on how you do everything here. Then we can add this piece in here, and of course, I'll come back and glue all this in a little while, but I wanted to show you how quick and easy this can go together once you have all of the sub assemblies done so put everything in on one side then you come back with the other side and it should all slide right into place just like that and then finally you will need to put in these two drive shafts just like that and then the entire thing First, plug them into the uh, the differential up here. 
just like this and this. And it's gonna be a lot easier once you actually glue all this stuff together. And then it's just a matter of fitting sliding in like that and then just like that it all fits together and once we glue it that is what the bottom of your suspension and drivetrain will look like quite a, a cool looking piece of uh, technology there so I will go and glue all these pieces together now and the only other thing I'll do too is I will attach the shock absorbers just like I did up front here but we'll put them on the back here as well Okay, we've got all of these pieces glued in and you can see here steering works nicely on it And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to glue in the the outside portion of the stowage bins So this one can go in just the way it is because you can't see inside of here at all So it'll get glued right into place Just like this it'll snap in there and it's got some little pins but for the other side, there is a shelf inside there that the radio is going to go on. So I've gone ahead and painted the inside of this completely white. So that way when we go ahead and glue this side in and we flip it over, we'll have the white stowage bin inside there. And since I've also had the white paint out, I've gone ahead and built the back firewall here which will drop into place here, painted that white as well. I also have all of the little stowage bins that'll get mounted in there, I'll glue those on. And finally, I have the front plate here where the steering column fits in. And this will all lock right into place just like this. Down here in the front, there's some pins and just like that, you'll have it all in place there. There are a few things like the, uh, the gas pedal, things like that I need to put on, but you get the general idea. Okay, as you can see here now, I've gone ahead and painted the entire bottom of the M8 in olive drab. Uh, in the last scene, it may have looked like there was like scratches. It doesn't look as good because I've been handling it so much. And I only had had some extra paint in the brush. That's why I started painting it, not completely. But now that all of that is done, I can go ahead and spray the entire thing. I've also gone ahead and built up the muffler which we've just done in uh, a black color for right now. And we can put our rust right on top of it and it'll get glued into place just like that. Okay, now it is time to assemble the wheels and I'm gonna show you quickly how you can put these together so that the wheels actually spin. If you don't care about that, you just glue all four pieces together, no problem. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna put the uh, shaft in here. No glue at all, just hold it in place right there then hold it up to this portion and only apply glue around this edge right here and just go around the entire edge of course and if you do that this will continue to spin okay now that that part is glued you can see that this thing still spins on the shaft and now you want to apply just glue just around this edge here and a little bit inside and just there push the two pieces together and it will still spin. Then of course, once the, the wheel goes together, it's just an A and B side like that. And then this shaft will get glued right inside here. Okay guys, I've gone ahead and painted the, the wheels and tires and have glued them in position. And before I start working on the upper part of the hull, I wanted to point out a little mistake that I made that I've gone ahead and corrected. I just got the PDF version of the interior color charts for my instructions on this vehicle and I messed up and painted all of these originally in olive drab and as you can see they should be white like they are right there. So what I'm going to do right now too is since I've got these new PDFs I want to show you um, how the instructions are going to look inside the, uh, the vehicle. These are the color plates for the internal parts so you'll see what colors to paint everything inside there. I think it's pretty interesting too there's a lots of uh, extra decals and detail that get need to get added inside here and as soon as I get my decals which you won't notice any different because in the video I already have them but as soon as again we'll work on finishing more but in the meantime we can start working on the upper part of the hull. Okay, now that we have most of the interior done, we can start working on the upper part of the hull. And lots of big pieces like this where we put this little uh, air cover over. 
This will get glued into place right here. Pretty hard to get them in the wrong position because they're all angled a certain direction. And of course, one side has the uh, hinges on it. So you see it all gl get glued into place there. And of course, you could always leave them unglued if uh, you know there was an engine to come out later on in the future. One of the aftermarket resin companies might have one. And then it's just a matter of going down the line and gluing in some of these big parts right here. All very simple. They just line up to the right pieces. I've also gone and created, or started to create, the uh, light covers because we need to glue all of those into place down here. Those will get popped right in there. And there's just a couple pieces that make up these nice, nice detailed light covers. Then they'll get all glued on right there. So as you can see, it's all very simple stuff. I will show you how this portion of it goes together, all the top covers, once they get all the little tiny pieces glued on. And then over in here in this little container here, Hopefully you can see I've got lots of little tie down hooks uh, all, that are going to get glued in all over the vehicle. And you'll be able to see like right here, these little holes or these little divots. Each one of those, the pairs holds one of those little tie downs on it. So I think there's probably about 40 of them that need to get put on. But they really do add a nice bit of detail to the overall part of the vehicle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all these basic parts glued into place right now and I'll come back and we'll show you how we start to build the assembly for the driver and co-driver's uh, compartment. Okay, I've spent eh, probably about 30 minutes just going ahead and gluing on all the little parts. The little, little tie downs as you can see here, the grab handles and things like that for the rear engine deck plus this portion here with the hinge. All of those have been put on, plus lights, minus the clear parts, of course. We're going to do those very, very last. And the, uh, the light guards are all put into place here. Now, with all of those pieces on, I can kind of give you the idea how the, uh, the driver's uh, compartment with this co-driver compartment is all put together. Now, I did glue on one side right here with all of its little, little pieces on, just so I could kind of show you a little bit easier. So this piece right here has the little brace on it. This actually holds the top flap when it opens up and it will get glued into place just like this. You see how well it lines up? Makes that little structure just like the other side. Of course, it'll stick better when it's got glue on it. Then you will be able to, like on this, this is the top flap. And you do have to decide whether or not you want to have these all open or closed. Now, for this particular piece, I'm going to leave them all open because I built all that interior and want to show it off. And then we have this here. This is the, the front piece that's got all the little, uh, little pieces on it, the uh, vision port, all of those kind of pieces. I'm going to recommend once you get those done not to glue it into place. And the reason so is because there's a big decal that goes underneath here, a big star, that is very difficult to put on if you have this already glued on. So you can kind of just rest it there temporarily, but I would not glue them into place just to make it that much easier to paint and decal once it's all done together. So you see, that's basically it. So you can either have these in the, the open position or the closed position like that. And that goes true with these hinges up on top that if you wanna leave it all buttoned up like that, you can. Once again, I'm gonna leave it all open. So I do have to just put a few of the little, little brackets and things like that on the inside of this. Actually, it'll be the inside of the piece, but it'll be on the outside because of the way we're gonna display it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all those finished up and then I will glue what I can into place, but I will leave these little front pieces off until we're ready to have the painting done. Okay, now that I've got all those other structures built, I've gone ahead and attached this little side panel right here of the vehicle. And this is the part that has the hinges on it here. Now, there have been some few questions about, hey, what if I don't want to put the side fenders on? You won't have to. And from what I understand, you leave them off just like that. And you'd have to just go ahead and sand off the uh, the the hinges here and then drill three holes where the bolt would be for the hinge because you're assuming that the hinge would be completely removed. Uh, you might want to look around too. There might be some pictures of them removed with still part of the, uh, the actual hinge there, but that gives you an idea that the fender is separate and you can leave it off completely. And also too, we've got our front fenders here. They very simply just kind of get glued into place just like that on both sides. So I'm gonna do all of that right now so I can go ahead and paint all of this olive drab. And that way we don't have to worry about getting any overspray on all the detail we did inside the, the turret.
Okay, what I've done right now is I've attached the, what this piece, flat piece is, is basically the inside of the wheel well. So it covers up the top of the wells. It's all gonna get completely covered over, but you need to put that in right now to give it a little bit of stability. And with both of those sides done, I have also can attach the rear plate right here. You can see it's got little grooves that'll just lock it all into place right there. So we'll go get this all glued into place. Okay, now that we have the fender glue on and we've got these little pieces, the top of the wheel wells, we can actually go ahead and glue all of this together. And before you do that though, I would definitely, and this is how I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna go ahead and paint all of these pieces all of drab before I put all of this together. It is just gonna save so much time trying to, uh, you know, mask the inside here, keep paint from overspraying on all the detail that you built on the inside, it's just going to be a heck of a lot easier. And it's not going to be a problem once it's painted to glue it together anyway, because it kind of basically just snaps into place, you put a little uh, cement on it, and you'll be all set to go. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and paint all these pieces, and then we'll glue it all together. Okay, guys, I've got the upper part of the hull built up as well as the lower and I'm all set to put them together. I was just waiting on the decals and the decals have shown up. Now, obviously it's gonna to go together pretty easily. There's a lot of little placards that go inside here that tell you what everything is. I'll show you a picture right now from the actual instructions, how they will go on. And I'm gonna go ahead and put all these in place and then I'll come back just before I put the top on and show you what they look like. And there they are. There is all of the little decals showing all the different items that are inside the vehicle. They go all the way around on both sides like that. And they are also on the inside lip uh, where the two driver's seats are. I guess you could kind of see one. Yeah, actually, so one of them is it's fairly visible if you look straight on. But all of those decals are included inside. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to let them all dry. We're going to clear coat them with some dough coat. And then I will go ahead and glue the top of the hull onto the lower part of the hull. Okay guys, jumping a little bit ahead here, since I finished up the lower hull and did all the painting on it, put the top and bottom, all that stuff together, what I thought I'd do is, since I decaled the inside, I would go ahead and decal the outside of the vehicle too. And it's putting decals on, so it's nothing super difficult, uh, but I thought I'd do is show it to you what it looks like right now. I went with the, uh, the early Normandy one that has the bright lettering on it, yellow lettering. This one happens to be D32, Danny. And keep an eye on this. So you've got the D on the front fender and the 32 on the back fender. We also have the big white star with the circle on the front. It fit perfectly. It's supposed to line up just with the edge down here. And remember how I told you those flaps are gonna come down and cover it. It's a very good idea to make sure that the uh, decal is on before you put the rest of it on. And then as we come around to the other side here, this is the way the instructions call out for it. So that's what I did. We've got the D slash three and the two on the other side, flipping it around. We also have got some big stars and the markings on the, the back of the vehicle. Now, some of these big decals are, are big and they're tough putting on on a surface like that, but making sure that the, the surface is very, very wet and using the uh, Mark Fit Strong, I was able to get them to lay down absolutely beautifully. And then after I put the decals on, we put two coats of clear coat on, sealed them in, let it fully dry, sanded it with some thousand grit sandpaper to get rid of any film, and then finally covered it with uh, Lucky Varnish Ultra Matte. And you can see it just makes the decal film completely disappear. Looks like it's actually painted right on. So. I've got the uh, basically the whole lower hull built. This is a, a shovel. I'm just experimenting on painting the tools. It's not glued on yet, but uh, just giving myself an idea. But now we can go ahead and start working on the turret. Okay, now that the lower hull is all done, we can start working on the turret. Now, and to speed up the video a little bit right here, I started putting together some of the parts that are pretty easy. This is the gun assembly. And if you look at the instructions real quickly, it is not very difficult. It is just following the instructions right along there and you will have it done. But I've also gone ahead and built a few of these sub assemblies for the turret basket, which I have right here. So what I need to do now is I need to glue these together 
making sure you glue them on the right side because this angle piece here needs to go on the inside of the turret. But this whole section of the basket needs to get painted white along with the, uh, the actual turret ring here that goes inside. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this completely built up and I'm gonna paint this the white color that it requires. And then for the actual turret itself, I'm going to glue the front and back together because there are two different types of the front here. This piece and this, you can build either the late or the early. Uh, mainly the difference is how far apart the, uh, the scope is on here. It's out a little bit further on the other version, but I'm building the early one. That's the most common one in World War II. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get this glued together Put the get rid of the seam on the inside there then i'm going to paint this whole thing olive drab then i'm going to paint all of these parts right here the white and then we can start putting it all together okay i've gone ahead and i've assembled the turret and i was able to glue the front and back together and did a little bit of filling and sanding and things like that i think we got the seam gone pretty good on both sides you see a tiny bit more right there I might have to do a little bit on, but pretty close to being done with the turret itself. We have the turret basket here all painted up with the white and, of course, the turret ring here. Which really like the way that came out right there with all the numbers and marks all the way around it. Looks good like that. And so now it is time to go ahead and assemble this. So this will get glued into the bottom down in through here as well as the gun. The barrel is only in here just, just temporarily. I think it's gonna be a lot easier getting the gun in the turret here without the longness of the barrel <laughs> in getting in the way. And then there's also one other little piece that we need to attach on there as well. So I'm gonna get all of those glued into place right now. Okay guys, here we are. Here we have the turret uh, with all of the basket, all those parts kind of glued into place there. And you'll also notice that I've painted the outside and decaled uh, the, the side of the turret with the big white star on both sides, I've actually done it. And I've done that before, I've actually attached a bunch of these other parts because it just makes it so much easier to paint dull coat, or clear coat, excuse me, gloss coat, put the decal on and then dull coat over all that without having to try to get it around this, this little railing right here. And this little railing goes on the outside here kind of just will get glued into place. But if you have this in place, it is very difficult to get that uh, the star in there properly straight and it's just, just a nightmare. So it's easier just to do it like that and then put it on and then glue all these other pieces around it. There are also, you'll notice the two little holes all over the top of the turret. Those are the little tie downs that you see right here. I have to glue those into place, but those will be easily glued in and painted without damaging any of the other parts on there. And the last thing I have is I've just put together the uh, the 50 cal ring. This is, there's two different options. There's an early and a late one in there. This one has more of the early type and it will get glued. There's a little marking right there that'll glue it right into place there. It's only a couple parts, so it's very simple to put together. So what I'm gonna do now is I'll get this glued into place. I'll also get all of the little tie downs on as well as this side rail in. And then I'll come back and show you what it looks like once all that parts are on. Okay, here it is. Here is the completed model. This is the uh, the brand new 16 scale M8 Greyhound all built up. And I want to talk about a few of the things that I've put on uh, in this last little section here. First of all, I went and put all of the little tie downs, as you can see. There's lots of them on the turret there. And those are going to come in handy later, especially when you want to put all kinds of accessories all over it. I also went ahead and attached right here the mount for the 50 cal and also have the 50 cal on there as well with a uh, ammo can next to it there also there are a few tools that i painted up and put those on and the uh, mines on the side here now unfortunately i don't have a large enough turntable with a motor on it that I can show you this vehicle in a 360. So I'm gonna have to slowly but surely turn it on this larger turntable I have, but this will work. This will give you an idea of what the overall look of the vehicle is. Now remember, there is no weathering on this and I haven't done any weathering on it yet because there is some more stuff I plan on doing to this vehicle. And that has to do with all of the aftermarket figures and accessories that will be out on the market very, very soon for this vehicle. 
Now, of course, with those giant hatches right there too, hopefully you can see inside and see all the little placards that we had made up for the inside of the vehicle. That really sticks out a lot when you're looking inside. Because it does have the interior, you really wanna see all that extra detail. So there it is, there is the model. Now, good news. The, uh, the factory has completed all of them. They are actually on containers and going around the world as we speak. In fact, um, I should have my first batch here in the United States in probably about two and a half, three weeks. So let's say the end of April, they should start arriving approximately. Now, it could be a little delayed with the shipping, but that'll give you a general eye on, idea on that. Now, as I said, I haven't done any weathering on it yet because there are some more things that I want to show you, and I'm going to do that right now. Okay, the first thing I want to show you in aftermarket stuff that'll be here very, very soon, actually probably about the time the actual kit shows up, are these pieces from Value Gear, uh, extra stowage that will go on the vehicle. Now, this is actually two different sets. Unfortunately, the bag ripped open and they got mixed, so I'm not sure what goes with what, but uh, we'll know more information about that anyway very, very soon. These are the very first test shots that uh, Steve at Value Gear was kind enough to uh, bring over to me so I could try them out. Uh, we've got these. These are gorgeous right here. These are, you can see, already shaped and curved, and they have the cutout in the back here for the rail. This will be all of the stowage that will go on the side of the vehicle, just like that. You can see how that'll look really, really good. All the packs and bags, and there are two of them, one for each side, including the one that's got the little frying pan mounted on it there, just like that. And then this, I pretty sure this is the one that comes with those two side pieces so this has got like a spare tire tarps bags everything and this has got a cutout that it is designed to drop right into place right back yeah yeah just like that it did lock in so it sits right in the back here wraps around your your engine deck and then you're going to get all kinds of other accessories that you'll have like boxes bags uh you know, little bed rolls, things like that, all rolled up here. And of course, some extra, uh, some bags. So you really be able to customize that. These will be out very, very soon. In fact, uh, we should have them about the time that the actual kit shows up. So you'll be able to add these immediately to your, your build. But you can just see how cool this is going to look all painted up with all this extra gear all over the side. And then there's also going to be an alternative back if you don't want to have the wheel on it. It too has a drop-in part that just fits on like that and just slides right into the groove on the, uh, the two engine deck pieces there. So very, very nice from Value Gear. Okay, and now that uh, you've seen the Value Gear stuff, I'm going to show you a close-up of the actual vehicle all built up here. And that is because I want to talk about a new four-man set coming out from Jason Studios. Okay, and next up we have some brand new items from Jason Studios. Now, many of you may be aware, Jason Studios, uh, Jason does all of the artwork for Andy's Hobby Headquarters. All the box art is done by him. He also designs all of the figures that come in Andy's Hobby Headquarters kits. So he has come out with a line of resin figures specifically designed to fit inside the brand new 16 scale M8. And what you're looking at right now is the, uh, the overall CAD drawing of the four different figures and the accessory kit that will go on this. The first thing we're going to look at, though, are the figures. So the figures come in a four-pack, also individually, too. So if you only want one or two of the figures, you could buy those as well. But this is the four-pack, and I'm showing you the different artwork here. You see that you've got a driver, which is really cool because you saw how big that opening hatch was. And you also have the uh, assistant driver. He's sitting up on the top of the vehicle. And then you have a commander and a loader that's also in here and now you're looking at the individual pieces that you could buy them separately if you desire if you just want to buy just one or two of the figures that is also an option and Jason Studios is also coming out with a uh, pack of accessories to put all over it, just like Value Gear. They've got some different tarps and bags and boxes, things like that, that'll look great all around the side of the vehicle, including this. There is 3D printed 
50 cal shells and disintegrating links that you'll be able to paint up and sprinkle all over the back like you see it here in the artwork. I think it's going to look really good and add a nice, nice uh, detail effect to it. Now, from what I understand, all of these figures and the detail set will all be available within about about two or three weeks so just about the same time the kit is arriving in the US and of course around the world uh, these kits will be available and then you'll be able to add it inside your vehicle